I'm Jasmine Brandt, and I'm here with Will Packer. How are we doing today? I'm Will Packer, and I'm here with Jasmine Brand. We're doing awesome. We're doing awesome. So let's start from the very beginning. Okay. Um, what made us decide to go into filmmaking? Us, together, as a unit, collectively? You, you. you. What, we what? look good as a unit, don't we? <laughs> You know, for me, entrepreneurship was what drove me, and that's really what made me want to work for myself and be my own boss. And I kind of stumbled into film because I went to college, majored in engineering, and met a guy who wanted to be a filmmaker. He knew, I want to be a director. I want to be the next Spike Lee. I want to be the next John Singleton. So for me, I helped him to do that. I helped him find talent. I helped him find finance, and I helped him find distribution. That's what a producer does. So once we were successful with that film, then I branched out and did it again and again. And I realized, you know what? This is my entrepreneurial endeavor. Because I knew I wanted to be a boss. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be in charge. Film is good because it helps me to utilize my skill sets. Was it harder than you think, than you initially thought? It's super hard. I always knew it was going to be hard, but I, I don't think I knew it was going to be this hard. Okay. It's very, very challenging. It's an industry that a lot of people want to get in, and, you know, everybody sees the sexiness, the glamour. They see the red carpets, and they see the, you know, the, the, the interviews on jasminebrand.com, and they don't realize that that's 1% of what you know somebody like me does the 99 percent is a grind a real grind but you know what it's it's hard but it's fair that's what i like to say it's hard but it's fair yeah okay so um i believe your first film was what chocolate city in 94 yeah you're going back okay how has it yeah that is that's a while ago how Absolutely. has how's the climate changed for film since 94 what's the been been the biggest change that you've noticed you know what um the the uh, digital era is upon us now and so it's different when you talk about filmmaking now versus what it was you know 20 years ago um, now digital media is pervasive and everybody you know shoots on digital you don't have to have film also the internet is such a big part of um, the marketing the promotion the distribution of the of films now and it wasn't before. It wasn't nearly the force then that it is now. I love it because the Internet's the great equalizer. Because if you've got an interesting voice, if you've got an interesting perspective, you can put it out there. And if it resonates with people, people will find it. Before, there was no way that somebody in, you know, um, Tennessee could, you know, do a project or an idea and have somebody in Washington see it unless you had some, you know, sophisticated distribution infrastructure. Well, now you can just put it out there, you know, and I think that's a really good thing. I think it gives more people access. Okay. Okay. Um, switching gears a little bit here. Last year it was announced that you got that you got the huge uh, production deal. Yeah. Um, for folks that are not in the industry, can you kind of explain what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So basically what that means is that I now have a, a, a studio, a Hollywood studio that backs me in my projects, that um, are my partners in all my projects. So when I come up with ideas, when I have movies that I want to make, I now have a studio that will finance and distribute those films. Uh, and so that's great. And, and, you know, part of that deal allows me to, you know, have a presence and have an office and have a staff. And, um, you know, as a producer, that's what you want. You want to have that kind of a deal with the studio that believes in you because, you know, you can go out and create great content. And I have that deal in not just film, but also television. Okay. Um, was that something that you were working towards the entire time or did that situation sort of just fall on your lap? You know what? Nothing falls in your lap. Okay. You know, I don't believe in luck. I believe that if you work hard and you take advantage of situations and you take advantage of your own preparedness, that good things will happen to you. Okay. And so that's definitely what happened there. It's something that as I continue to grow as a filmmaker and progress as a producer, that opportunity arose. Okay. How many films do you have out this year? Coming out this year? Four. Okay. Four films that I will release in one year. How, how does that feel? That's awesome. That's that's a lot. It's not, it's not stressful? Oh, of course it is. But, you know, I, I've always, you know, um, been fortunate to deal with stress well. Mm -hmm. I think you have to keep everything in perspective. I don't think, you know, if I'm stressed out and I'm so stressed out that I can't function and perform properly, you know what? I'm not going to be stressed out for long because I'm not going to have many films or jobs or other opportunities. So I have to be able to balance, you know, my work with my life, with my family, with my other responsibilities and, you know, use the stress as a good motivating factor. How do you um, handle your stress? Do you, do you work out? Do you do the Jesus thing? Do you do yoga? Uh, what is the Jesus thing? I mean, you know, are, are you into... I love him. Oh, Do you? I do. I'm into the Jesus thing. 
Jesus. <laughs> I definitely am a person of faith, so I always lean, you know, on him. I'm definitely somebody that is uh, very spiritual. Um, and, uh, you know, I do work out. I'm not fanatic about it, but I definitely, you know, try to keep myself in shape because I need that energy. Um, you know, a lot of people, I'm too tired to work out. No, you're too tired to not work out. You're tired because you haven't worked out because you haven't allowed your body to go and, you know, get motivated and energize itself. The body's like a battery. It will energize itself if you allow it. But um, a lot of people don't. So laziness begets laziness. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, um, you know, I work, work hard, but I also play hard. So that also is a stress relief for me. I would definitely go and, you know, I'm not somebody that at this point in my life, I can take, you know, like two weeks off and do anything, but I can take a weekend here, a couple of days there and go pretty much wherever I want to go. So that's kind of cool. You know, as long as it's a place I can get to it in a couple of days. So I do that. I will do quick hits and, and quick, you know, um, recharge moments uh, or I, I don't even have to go anywhere i can do it at home i can just like you know sometimes it take a weekend and i like being around my kids my kids recharge me also they are so far removed from this industry and they just help remind me what i'm doing it for okay um think like a man too yes when you were doing the first film did, did you already have in mind that you you all were gonna probably do a sequel i hope so i didn't have the sequel in uh, in mind like what we would do okay. but I knew we were creating characters that we could go further with okay. and that's something that you know when you're making a film you definitely you think about the commercial aspect of, of, of creating something that um, can be a franchise but also you have to make sure that you create characters that the audience is invested enough in to be able to go further okay um, in a recent interview you were quoted as saying sequels are usually lose-lose propositions uh, what's the biggest challenge with the sequel or with think this sequel uh, exceeding the first. The first was massive. It was awesome. I mean, you know, it, it came out and did so well, um, you know, on a very limited budget and, and, you know, over $90 million. That's just, that's, that's huge, you know, even by Hollywood standards. So now the expectations are much higher. We surprise a lot of people with the first film. Mm -hmm. We're not going to surprise anybody with this one uh, because they're expecting it to do well. So it gets harder and harder to exceed expectations when you have a sequel. 